The Hornets fire coach James Borrego after four seasons. Locked on Hornets host Walker Mail joins us tonight. Walker, James Borrego coached over 300 games for Charlotte, but it seems like Michael Jordan is judging him on two of them, the play in losses. Is that fair? And is it fair to say that that's a lot of what happened in terms of James Borrego getting fired? Yeah, it's interesting you put it that way, Nick. You kind of put the pressure on me to answer this. <laughs> I, I think I think it's fair to say that James Borrego would still be the head coach of the Charlotte Hornets if they did not get blown out by the Atlanta Hawks. I do think there is some level of that that's fair. You go back to last year, that loss to Indiana, it was brutal. There was no doubt about it. It kind of put a damper on what was overall a positive season. But this year, there were supposed to be higher expectations. They win 43 games. They increase their win total by 10 from the year prior, and that's great progress. The Eastern Conference, a lot more tough this season, and because of that, you have to go to the play-in tournament. But even so, you still had to put up a better performance than what you did against the Atlanta Hawks. Two big games like that. Nick, even when you look at some primetime games that took place over the last four years of James Brago's tenure and the way they did not show up for a lot of those. I think it's safe to say that Michael Jordan was not satisfied with the performance of this team when it came to the national spotlight and how they would play under. it. All right. You mentioned the progress. There was certainly player development, but big picture was a shakeup needed to help LaMelo ball and his franchise now take a big step instead of more of the baby steps we've seen the last few years. Yeah, I hate to keep dodging these. I don't know if it was needed, you know, but yeah. I also, I understand. I understand why Michael Jordan did this. You know, I, I don't know if it was 100% needed in order for this team to get to the next step, but at the same time, you can't get blown out by close to 30 points in each of the last two play-in appearances. I, I'll tell you this, I would like to see a coach that has a high ceiling come in, which means I don't necessarily want to see a same old recycled guy that might have got let go from a job that he didn't do a, you know, a decent enough job at with a previous franchise. I do think there are some exceptions. I think a Frank Vogel might be interesting. I do think some other assistants out there, maybe an Adrian Griffin, maybe a David Vanderpool, maybe some other assistant, Sam Cassell would make some sense. But I don't know if it was 100% needed for LaMelo to take that next step. There were reports that JB and LaMelo's relationship was actually pretty good, along with Miles Bridges, who became a key player. Ultimately, I think MJ just had enough of the losing in the play-in games. Yeah, I guess what's what are the most important, you know, traits of that next head coach? Because, you know, is it like the NFL where it's like, hey, the defense was bad, hire, hire somebody that can coach. Go the, the exact defense. opposite. But yeah. you've also got to help usher the, the real LaMelo ball era in here in Charlotte as he enters that third season and hopefully superstardom. There is a lot of pressure on whoever the coach is going to be to win, to at least host a play in game. If not, you get that six seed and just avoid the play in tournament altogether. A lot of times when you fire one coach, you want to go to the exact opposite. Like you mentioned, let's go for a defensive minded guy. Now, James Borrego had this team as a top eight offensive unit. Now we need to find a guy that'll get this team to be a top 10 defensive unit. Ultimately, it's still going to come down to the kind of off season different and, and decisions you make with the roster to help whatever coach is in place. I think it's important for a coach to make sure they kind of let LaMelo play instinctually, maybe within the confines of an offense, but like Mike Budenholzer likes to say with Milwaukee, play random. I think that's something that if you don't necessarily know what's going to happen offensively, the defense doesn't either. And so I think that kind of embodies the mantra of play random. I want them to do that with LaMelo. I want him to have control, play, go out and transition. I want them to keep that kind of pace and also provide some emphasis on the defensive side, on the defensive end of the court, where one, once you get that roster in place, once you get maybe a defensive center, then these guys buy in immediately. Nick, there were so many times where they wouldn't show up for one quarter and they would perform well in three of them, but then they would get beat by 20 in just one 12 minute period. And that would be enough for them to catch a loss. And if you can get guys to buy in over the course of 48 minutes, and especially on the defensive end, where I think there were a lot of problems, those are the qualities I'm looking for in a next head coach. All right, I'll uh, put you on the spot one more time. Of course. Does James Borrego become a head coach in the NBA again? 
Yes, I do think that. I think there was enough substance here. I think there was enough positivity where there would be another franchise that would not mind bringing him in. One of the things I think was a positive for James Borrego was his ability to develop some of these younger players. If you don't want to give him the credit to develop LaMelo Ball, fine. He was already a really talented player, third overall pick. The guy was awesome immediately. I would argue that he had a big role in developing Miles Bridges. Same with Devontae Graham, who's making more than $10 million a year. Miles Bridges is going to get close to a max contract. Look at Cody Martin's improvement. Look at Jalen McDaniels. That guy was drafted in the 50s, and I think he's become a pretty important role player for the Charlotte Hornets team. Lots of players improved. While James Borrego was a coach here with the Charlotte Hornets, there's going to be another owner. There's going to be another general manager that values that a lot when trying to rebuild their own franchise. And James Borrego would make a good candidate to be the head coach of that team. All right. 12th head coach in Hornets history. I guess we'll find out in a few weeks who that is. Walker Mail, you always deliver. Thank you. And checked out Locked on Hornets. They had two po podcasts up today, the, the regular one and then the one we really need to listen to, that emergency, the emergency pod. emergency one. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> always love an emergency pod. Thanks for being here at Pitch 2. <laughs> always appreciate you, Nick. Thanks.